Recently, I had a comment that was posted on one of my YouTube videos that, that it was kind of disappointed that I didn't uh, do more videos. And the real reason is I really haven't had time. I, I probably will get back to them soon, but right now, uh, you know, I've got other things in my life that uh, I'm more interested in. But I did come across the fact that I had made a lot of uh, Facebook Live videos, and there was a lot of good information in them that uh, some of it wasn't in the videos that I had currently listed. So what I decided to do was list these to my YouTube channel. And I hope you enjoy them. I hope you find more knowledge in them. And uh, also, if you're not a subscriber, well, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you'll be notified. Uh, you select all. And uh, if you like them, give them a big thumbs up. I hope you enjoy. Let me get started here in just a minute or two. I just figured I'd show off a few pieces of uh, material while we waited. I'd say this is my dinosaur embryo. I kind of like this. This is a piece that was given to me. And then I have this, this nice piece of uh, spiderweb verside. I just don't have the heart to cut it. It's it's nice two pound piece, but like I say, it's just it's just so pretty. I just leave it in the display case. Hello, Penny. At least I have uh, comments today. Now, it might be a little disorganized. It's going to be hard working around with moving a, a webcam and. going to the the different things and not be able to see like with videoing with your phone or something but but it'll work out anyway i've got my lovely wife here to help me too so we'll kind of get started here what we're going to talk about today is is we're going to we're going to be talking about uh cabbing equipment and uh We'll talk a little bit about the different machines, and we're going to talk a bunch about the the different wheels. And we're going to kind of address because a lot of people have a hard time uh, cutting uh, heart cabochons. I, you know, I, I can see that some of them have have problems, and and normally, and let's see. Uh, Nor normally where the problem falls is it's in this V up here they and on the point on the tip of it and what we're going to do is we're going to address those on how to get those nice sharp sharp edges instead of rounded okay first we're going to talk about lapidary wheels now and and equipment now I have I have my cabin machine that I, I use all the time. Is it's an old Highland Park. It's it's a nice machine for me. I like it. Uh, the reason I like it is because it's driven. It's got a separate motor, so if it has a problem with a motor, I don't have a big uh, expense of replacing it. It's a, it's a simple design. Uh, whenever you start. And I actually I have two of them, but a lot of you use the Diamond Pacific. You you might use the GD or the Titan or something. Now both of these they use a motor with a arbor that comes out in the wheel to mount on, which it, it's it's fine. I, I don't want to knock the equipment, but the problem is when your motor goes out it's really expensive to replace now they do have some that use a center arbor and they belt drive to a motor and and they take up a little more room and uh when you when you uh get them you've got a little bit more space involved but you don't have the expense whenever you start uh having to replace any parts. Plus, another thing is, if, 
if your wheels get out of balance on this, and I use pretty heavy wheels, this machine's had a little bit of modification to it. But when I use these expandable drums on here, or I use the centered uh, course wheels, they they have a lot of weight to them. They're, they're not like the other ones. And we'll kind of go into that. Now, this is a centered wheel like goes on my 6-inch machine here. Now this is for my bigger machine. I don't use this anymore, but it's kind of a backup if I have to have it. But with this one, which you don't have a solid metal center, you have a, a metal ring at the edge, and and you can see, of course, it's got a little bit of uh, coating on the side, but your diamonds are just electroplated to the top, or they might have a thin layer to the top on different designs on on your standard wheels, but on your centered wheels, like this one, your diamonds are from this point here all the way out. So you have this thick area right here from from right there on out. That's all usable uh, diamond area. Now these are considerably more heavy than the other ones, and you imagine you get an eight, 8 inch, it's, it's heavier too. So these wheels, once you wear this uh, thin layer off the top, then you're then you're down to this metal ring. Now this, I could have cleaned this up so you could see better, but you've got a little bit of diamonds on the edge. But this this diamond is really only about from the end of there out. It's there's not much diamond at all, and so even though these are, I say a lot less expensive than these because this wheel is going to cost you. Roughly about three to to four hundred dollars for a six inch, <clears throat> where you could buy a six inch in this style for somewhere around seventy five a hundred dollars. But this wheel here will last considerably longer, and I can give you a, a for instance over here on my cabin machine. Okay, <laughs> this. This wheel here, this one's just been replaced. It, I haven't used it much, but this wheel here has, has made about 2,000 cabs. And you can see that there's no noticeable wear here. If On one of those other wheels, if I made 200 cabs, I would probably be wearing it out in certain places. Now, now I do have a few cups because I get a little rough on my wheel, but there's there's very little wear in the center here, this is just almost still flat, which I try to work more on the outside because you always end up on the inside. But what I'm trying to get at is, yes, it is expensive, but if you can afford it, you're only going to do it. Uh, I, I probably won't do another one in my lifetime unless something happens and, and the wheel's got to be replaced. So, so that's something to consider. Now when we were talking about machines, now this machine here has a shaft and then it's belt driven down. <clears throat> well, it's supported by pillar blocks, so even though I have a whole lot of weight up here, it's supported in a way that even if I get a little bit out of balance, I don't have a bunch of movement and vibration. It will, and it takes it a long time to slow down, but it will get a little bit, but it gets very little because of the way that it's set up. Now, if I had this much weight on that other one, I'd probably burn the motor up. Okay. We're going to discuss, we're going to discuss uh, your regular wheels now, too. Now, I use expandable drums. This is an expandable drum. And what this does, when it starts spinning, it expands out. Now, it's got to be run in a direction where it rotates this way. And the reason for that is these, this area here, it's allowed to get bigger. So, And I don't have a 8-inch belt out here. But what it does is when you turn it on, it expands out so it holds the belt tight. If you was to put it on backwards, which would be this way, and it was rotating, when you put pressure on here, on your cab, you're starting to you start to release the pressure that's on here and it would allow your belt to, to walk 
back and forth. So you, anytime you use an expandable drum, you want to rotate it that direction. The advantage of expandable drums for me is mainly the, the width. Your standard wheel, this is how wide you're going to get. You're going to get a two inch wheel. And a two inch wheel is, it's a good area for most cap, but you notice when you have that extra inch how much more area you have. And the other thing is, is now this is a Johnson Brother wheel for people that haven't used them. I don't particularly like them. I, you know, it's it's a, a lot harder than your, your regular wheel. Now this this is a, a Povey wheel here. This is one that I recoded. It's your standard wheel, but I've recoded it with diamonds. But they've got a whole lot more flex to them. But both of these have the same problem when it comes to doing hearts. If you look at this straight edge, and on the edge, these wheels tend to roll. They, they all have a little bit of roll to them. This is the same way. It's got a little bit of roll. Now this is a, this is another one. This is a more aggressive. It's still a 600, just like this is a 600, but it's just more a, an aggressive 600, a fast cut, if you would. Now this is straight on the edge. It doesn't have that, that roll to it. But you still end up, you end up feathering off pieces of, off this edge here when you do hearts. And so eventually what you have is you have a rounded edge and you can't get in the point. Now, this is, a, this is a, the belt. We use the belt on the expanded drum. It's, it's not, not that expensive. Now, I, I get these out of China and they're, they're good grade. Mohawk. Hans, the one that that sells these, uh, and they tend to work as well as the others for me. But these have they're they're like about the small ones, about twenty bucks for for a six inch. And the six inch one, the six inch, I use the the uh, two and a half inch. So uh, that gives me a good width still. But anyway, once they wear, they start fraying on the edges like this. Now this this belt, and I've wore it pretty good everywhere else too. But you can see where it start getting light where I wore more of the diamonds off on the edge. And, and the reason for that is when I cut these, and especially on my 600, I, <clears throat> I cut, I'll show that later. But I cut from the back side on here, which actually damages it. And I'll run it for a while and do that. And then I'll go to the other side. And when it starts getting frayed to where it won't do a good job in the V on my my hearts, well, then I'll just I'll flip it over. I'll wear the other side out. And then, then when that's done, I just pull it off. And I donate it to someone who wants a, a belt for their machine that don't, don't do hearts because it's usually got good good amount of use in the middle. But it doesn't take just a minute to change them uh, to do that. Now, let's see. We're going to go over here to, to my little machine. Okay. Now, this this is an old this is an older model genie, which it's it's a good one. It's it's old. It's got. I kind of like it better. It's got a uh, metal water pump instead of the uh, plastic or, or composite stuff that the new ones made out. Now, when I run these belts, I run them just a little bit over the edge. That way I can be sure and get my Vs. These I have wore off on one side, so I've turned them over. But you notice the direction that my wheels are, so they'll expand. Now, when I run water on this, I use both of my sprayers on my spitters on the on the wheel at one time. I want a lot of water. Now, especially the wide wheel, even though I'm only using about half of it, so I'm not using anything not not anything wider than what comes on. But your diamonds, when they stay good and wet, they they'll last longer. You won't wear them out. I, I've I've done them both ways, and I can tell you they'll wear a lot longer this way. 
Now, because I need the extra space between the two hearts, I I only run two wheels. There's no way I could get uh, one of these big heavy wheels on there with these wheels anyway. It wouldn't. It just wouldn't fit. Even with the the factory setup, it won't fit. Now these these wheels it's easy to modify this machine just a piece of uh, PVC if you have a, a cut off saw you can measure how long you want cut it off nice and smooth it's got to be straight you can't take a hand saw and you know if you have any variation it's going to put uneven pressure on your wheels but it's just a matter of making spacers to the size to fit where you want to go now I can't use the 600 wheel, I can't use this side of it because when I spray water here it gets onto my pump drive belt and then my my uh, air pump will stop running and, and I'll have to wait till it dries out. So, so I just use it on one side and that's why I tend to wear out the edge a little bit more. Plus if I was doing them on both sides I'd have to shut down, let it slow down so I could slide the belt over and do it again. Uh, get it repositioned so it just works better this way. Now another thing with this, this motor is not designed to turn the weight of these. This is a lot of weight that it's turning. Now I have a fan in the back here that I keep blowing on my motor. Whenever I first started doing this, I actually, my starter for my motor, which is located underneath, uh, went out so my machine started turning about half speed. Well, when I went in and replaced it, I went to a, a heavier duty starter capacitor because it starts with a bigger load. When you start figuring the weight of one of these, and I don't know if it's about 8 pounds or 10 pounds for, for these, and whenever I'm traveling, I use this machine. I'll put one on one side and one on the other side. But when you're starting that, it takes a, it stakes a lot of uh, power on this motor. Now, if you had one of the other machines that uses just an arbor and a belt drive you could always replace and get a bigger motor but on this one you don't have that option so so I keep a fan running and and I can run quite a while with it but when it gets when it, after I run for a while I give it time to cool off and then I'll run some more so so anyway that's that's how uh, that's done but but I do encourage you if you're going to run diamond run a lot of water if you if you have that that opportunity now on on the uh the wheels i, I want to tell you because i see about taking taking your fingers off now i can tell you when you grind and if you put pressure on it that you're going to uh and and you get your fingers against it you're going to take and polish your, your skin off your fingers. Now I have done it long enough and doing little bitty ones by hand because normally I do the backs and when I start doing down to trying to do a uh, under a 13 millimeter and I'll tend to to do my, my uh, fingertips off just a little bit. So you do want to be careful with it. It won't cut you but, but you can take and rub that off and it's not a good feeling when you uh, take and grind the end of your skin off. Uh, but but do be aware whenever you see uh, heart cabochons out there that, that, that it is a little bit more involved when someone starts making one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to uh, we'll try to make a cabochon over here. Let's see. I, the way I recope my wheels, the easiest way to tell you is, now I'm a member of East Texas Gym and Mineral Society. I can't and, see what the camera's doing. And I take and, uh, I, let me swap screens here. Uh, and I, regularly I teach a class on uh, cabbing and stuff like that, but we have a website. It's etgms.com. It's easy enough. Etgms.com. Uh, my low, my my little picture 
for me, that's the logo for the the club, but it's just the first letter, etgms.com. Go to that site. You can go into tips or and techniques or something, and there's a uh, uh, it's a PDF or a or a word document, but it goes through recoding wheels. What you got to do because I learned this a while back uh, how to do it. I don't do a lot of them anymore because I use belts a lot, but with that being said, this machine right here, uh, this particular one is an 8000. It's been recoded, and I don't know. I've done, I don't know, <laughs> probably a 1,000 or so cabs just on this one machine, on this one belt, because once you coat it, and you, can, and you don't want to get carried away and coat it too thick, but once you coat it, and I use a lot of diamond powder, <coughs> It it lasts a long time. So so, uh, but most of my belts I just buy new ones. It's it's as it's easy and and like I say Mohawk sells those and he gives a good deal <coughs> on that stuff. The, now on the centered wheels he he sells those. That's what I use. Uh, they are <coughs> uh, heavy, so the shipping brings the cost up, but they're still considerably cheaper than, than buying them somewhere else. And I did have a problem with my course wheel. Some of y'all might know that it come apart. Somehow it got damaged, and I'd had it for over a year. And I contacted Mo and showed him what it was, and he took care of it, shipped me another one out. So so understand that uh, uh, things can happen to these two. Now what we're going to do we're going we're going to work on a heart now now I got one here and, and I'm going to show you basically and I'm going to go through steps because I kind of did this to speed things up now I use a recirculating water system I've converted these machines I, I've added wheels I've repiped it all you know whatever you need that's what I'd say to to modify and make your machine work now, like I say, I use a lot of water. And you might want the other side. I use a lot of water. Now, whenever, whenever you do a heart, first you're going to uh, trim it out. Now, I'm going to use this to do for the demo because uh, this is soft enough material. It'll go fairly quick. But the first thing I do whenever I do this, and you decide which wheel you need it to how hard your material is. If you have hard material, I say don't bear down on your wheels trying to make it cut fast. You're going to have to use a certain amount of pressure. But if you bear down on hard material you're, and you get the sharp edges against it, it it's even going to uh, affect the life of your, your hard wheel. So what, what I normally do... I take off about a 45 degree angle off the side. I just, I'm taking off this material. I know I don't need it. I've made enough scabs and I know a lot of people get scared when they're beginning, but, but at a 45 degrees, I'll just take this down and I'll take it down pretty close. And then now on this, and I don't want to get too hard when I'm on my course wheel, and I don't want to go all the way in, especially if I've got some pretty hard material because it's going to make it chip off. You can see it's chipping a little bit. But I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll do that, then I'll take this material back off because when I take that side, it makes it wider. And then once I do that, I'm going to come over to my other wheel, and you can keep it this way, but you want to run it flat. And like I say, it depends on your material, how you how you want to do it. Or if you can keep it square, you can go this way if it's easy enough for you to see. And I'm going to take off the rest of that material down to my, my line that I've marked. And it's easy to tell if you're chipping when you get to your line because uh, you'll start seeing little white chips in your line. Now, small ones won't matter because if you make a cab right, you need to bevel this back edge off when you get finished. Plus, 
once I finish up here, I'm going to, I've got saw marks in here and stuff. I'm going to put this on my flat lap and I'm going to flatten this out. It's a lot easier to do the back and flatten them on a flat lap. That'll take it down a little bit. And then when you put a bevel on this edge, you'll uh, take out the rest of those chips. Now, when you're, when you're doing this, on these points you want to, and I'm not going to go too far here, but on these on these points, you you want to make sure that you have a sharp point on this end. And so, when you do this, of course, when you mark it, don't get a big wide felt marker and mark your cap. Mark, get you a, a fine tip one and mark it. Something will stay there, or you might use an aluminum scribe or something, whichever way you do it. But make sure you've got that, that point mark in there good. But but you want to make sure that you have a crisp point. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to, like magic, look, we got that all straightened out. Now we've got a We've got to do this end up here. Now, the easiest way, and this works real good with centered wheels because you do have a thick layer of diamond on the side. And what what you do is you, you hold it at an angle, and you've got your angle's got to affect. You have a curve here, and you have a flat side here, so you want to hold that angle, but you're not going to cut this all the way back in. You're going to cut in a pretty good way, but then you're going to stop. And you're going to look at it and see if your V is, the angle is right so it comes in for the middle. Okay, after you've done that, you'll come over on your other wheel and you're going to clean up what you have left. You're just going to clean up this V. Now, if you don't have a centered wheel where you can go on the side, you'll have to clean it up from one side, then you'll have to come in with the other one. Now, being I... I I have one, I don't have to worry about that. I'll just, I'll come in on the side of this one and clean that little bit of material up. And you'll look at it, make sure you've got a nice curve on your heart. And then you can come back and, and you can uh, get rid of this material here and get it to where it, it comes down right. Now, basically, Okay, now you've got your heart. Now don't try to make this V curve in like the rest of it. If you want to do that, that's fine. But what you're going to do is when you make that V curve in, I'm going to take just a little bit more off of here. Okay, when you make that V curve in more, it, it creates a problem one. Whenever somebody's doing silver work, they've got to fold this V. And this, this isn't like any other place because you have to try to pull and stretch metal to come inside here. And so a slide angle, which it, it has a taper to it, that works fine, but if you put too much in there, it makes it a problem for setting this. Okay, we'll go back to this bevel on this back edge. Whenever we bevel this back edge, and I always do it on, on my uh, soft wheel, I don't need to do a whole bunch of grinding. And it's, but anyway, you're beveling this bevel so that when somebody sets it, if they decide to set this in silver, that it's got a little meniscus where that solder is, and that gives that place a place where it to fit down in there smooth if it's going to set all the way down against the back plate. Uh, also, I polish the back of all my calves unless I'm going to use them myself and I know I'm not going to make an open back. But I encourage to figure that the calf is complete when the when the back is, is polished because a lot of uh, the people that buy these calves, they use them for uh, pendants. A lot of them want to see the back. They want them shiny, such as that. And if somebody's going to make an open back piece of jewelry with silver, they they'd want that shiny. They wouldn't want an ugly place. They might want to put a design there and, and show it off. So they 
they want that back polish. So, so be aware of that when you make them. You, you know, I could turn out a lot of calves, and, but it doesn't take that much longer for me to polish the back. Okay, now what we're going to do is we, we've done that. We're going to, uh, th I've, I've taken, I coarse, I coarse grind my back. I get it, I take off all my, my uh, marks and I take off all my, my saw marks too. I won't polish it all the way out because if you polish it up, it makes it harder for the dot uh, wax and stuff to stick. It tends to want to come loose more. So if it's just coarse and I, I use a, uh, about a 200 uh, or 220 wheel on my flat lap and I'll, I'll work it to there. And then, and then like magic, we got it all dopped up. Now I use super glue. Uh, you want to be aware if you use super glue. If you have a softer stone, you're going to pull out a hole in the back of it. So, so be aware of that. But what we're going to do is, now working this cab here, I, I can work this down, I can show you, but working this side of the cab is no different than working any other cab. You're going you're going to put it on there, you're, you're going to take off metal, and depending on how you do it, there's a lot of different ways. Some people work, I work all mine from here, a lot of people work on the opposite way. I, from the bottom. I like to see mine and, and I'll, I'll work it. I'll get my girdle, this flat place, to a certain place. Now on the girdle, I said a flat girdle. Now a lot of people put a, a taper on this flat side. They'll taper it in some. It's, it's whichever way that you do it. That's that's totally up to you. That's uh, There's so many different cabbers out there and there's so many different ways that they make them as, as there is cabbers. So, but I want you to be aware of that. This, At this point here, and I'm not going to work any of this up here, but at this point it's no different than working another cab. If you want this point sharp, when you work this point, work this point from here and then work this point from here. Don't come around. Now, once you get it down, you can come around and make sure that you don't bring off your point but but work this cab just like any other cab don't even be concerned with this v right now okay now with the magic of uh video we're going to go over here to the other machine i'm going to take a stop here let me see if i can uh make sure i if i got anything i need to address The the girdle, most silversmiths can work with uh, various thickness girdles. It's not a problem because you have uh, different thicknesses of, of bezel uh, wire. And plus, when it gets critical, they actually, once you set your bezel, you can sand your bezel down to height if you don't want to shim your stone. So I sometimes I shim mine, sometimes I sand it down. So... So that would affect that. Uh, when I get the super glue off, I take a double-edged razor at the edge of it, and I pop it loose, the part that's not underneath my dot. And then you can throw it in water. And uh, now this particular stone that I was doing, like the uh, the composite stones from uh, Cobalt, are uh, they're, you're not supposed to leave them in a bunch of water. So if you was going to take it off bits, you've just got to work around it with the single edge razor blade until it pops off. And like I say, be aware that you can pop off a piece in the back. So if you have a little bit extra thickness, then I'll go back and I'll flat lap the back down. Otherwise, uh, you you would use dop wax, just like conventional, uh, how they do it. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, we've dressed the girdle with uh, the, now, now like I say, now what we're going to do, we'll flip over, uh, make sure I didn't miss something up higher. Okay, uh, we're going to, through the magic of 
video, we're going to come over here to the other machine. Now what we have here, we have one that's finished. This is finished just like any other cab. You have a, a uh, dome all the way around, and this part here I didn't even touch. Now this part is easy to accomplish. Now you can do it on your other machines, but the problem is with that row, and you'll see a lot of hearts, they don't have a sharp curve in here, and that's because that row that's in there affects uh, getting into that point, so they end up having to actually have to have a curve in the top. But what we'll do here is Now, here's what I want to tell you about, and this is a soft, this is a soft material, so you don't have to worry about it as much. But you never run on diamonds on your soft wheels. You never run this sharp edge against your wheels. And that being said, I'm going to do that, but I'm going, to, I'm going to be easy on it. I do wear off extra diamonds because of that, but that's the way that I do these. But what you would do is you're going to get right in that corner, and, and you're going to do your final shape so you get your roll right. And you're going to get that now. Now what you do is you're going to take this this material off, and it's a lot easier when you don't have a a uh, camera in your ear. But but uh, now you can do these without your dot rod. Once you get to this point, I can even do like a a little twenty millimeter hard or something, even smaller ones. You can do this by hand without your dot stick once you get to here. But what you what you're gonna do is you're gonna smooth this and you'll you'll get this work worked in. Now with softer material you can do more. Now what I want to encourage you to is look at your horizon and what I mean and I, I teach this when I teach class, but look at your horizon. As as you turn this to the light, this horizon, the part that's at the edge you, you'll see any imperfections, any any flat spots, any high spots. As you rotate this, you'll see this. And that's whenever you can pick them up and see where you've got a problem. If you come up and it looks like it's square right there, even though you you don't have a good picture for it, you, you'll know that you need to work something off of it. But then, then you're going to do this same process through each one of these wheels. Now, once you get finished, and I don't have one without a dot on the back, so it makes it hard, harder to show you. But when you get finished and you're going to do the back, let's see. Let's just let's just find this one here. If, if you notice, like say, I'm running both of my uh, spitters on here. Fountain, spitters, uh, whatever you want to call them. They don't put up that much water anyway. But when I did this on the other machine, I finished it out to, to uh, a 1200 grip. If you watch how your light reflects, it'll give you a good idea of, of where you're setting and what you might want to do. If, if you have sharp point in some place you, on an edge where it's just breaking over, you might want to change it. Now we'll do the we'll do the same over here on this side. So I'm making sure I have water on the edge where I'm I'm working, but but we're. And it doesn't take much. Once you once you do it on your first wheel and, and you take the time to do it right, it doesn't take that much to do it on another wheel. Okay. Now, it's a good idea once you get there, make sure you just kind of wipe it off and see if you've got any places that look like they're... they're uh, like you missed. If you did, go back to the wheel before and do it again now. 
Well, I got a problem with this one. You can see it's turning white and black. It's got to be something going on here. It's not straight. It'll take forever to slow down. I'm going to put this over here to the edge and. Okay. And for some reason, it always seems like it's my uh, 1400 grit wheel that gets frayed first out of all of them. I normally snag it with the edge. Now, being everything's been 12 otherwise, now I've, what I'm going to do is, and when you're at all the other wheels, you'll just come to that point and you'll go, come around like that. Once you get to the 1200, you can roll that point around. But you don't want to stay there long on soft material, but I'll, I'll do that flat edge. And then I'm going to come back here and I'll do the, the rest of this one. And then we'll just dry it off. And we'll see what it looks like. And you want to pay attention when you dry it off, dry it good in the V because it doesn't you don't want it to look white in the V. It, it should look like it's it's polished like the rest. Now <clears throat> we'll do a final polish after this, but what I'm going to do now is I'll, I'll take this blade and get a razor blade. Okay. Now anytime I do this with a razor blade, I always use a rag because it seems like when I slip, it always seems like I get myself cut. So, but what I'm going to do is, I'm just coming around this edge and make sure your razor blade's sharp. If it gets dull, they're not that expensive. Come back and do it again. But I'm popping this off. Now, if you had a hard cab, if you had some material that you could soak, this is all you'd do. Just take this, this edge loose. And uh, once you have all that loose, it doesn't take that long. Usually, occasionally, I might have to soak one overnight, but but usually, uh, you know, an hour you can go back and you you can just put a little twist on it. But okay, now this this went ahead and popped off, and now I'll take off the the rest of the super glue, and you can tell if you actually pulled something loose because you can look at your stick, which we didn't pull anything out. So, and you can you can feel too, but. But that's that's as easy as it is. And when I use super glue now, I use an activator too. So I don't just uh, wait around for it to dry. I use an activator. Now, what we're going to do is we'll finish the back or we'll kind of get you an idea on how to finish this back. And the way we do that, we're going to finish part of it just like we would on any other one. We're, we'll go on here and we'll make sure that it's smooth which like I say we already did the course and I'm just making sure that I don't have anything else now the way you will do this edge is you run it at an angle and you bring it down but you notice we didn't just turn around we 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 come down to that point and then we went around. Now you put with whatever uh, depth of bevel, bevel you want on there. We're going to do the same thing here. We'll just we'll smooth out the back. You always want to keep it moving when you're doing that because you don't want to grind. And I. 
I'm bringing this over. That it takes a little bit to to where you get used to doing that, you know. But but it's it's that it's that simple. Now on the on the twelve thousand, you can just go ahead and rotate all the way around. That way, you'll ensure that that you did get everything. Now you're welcome to, if you want, you can go around that bevel on the uh, fourteen thousand, but uh, it's not necessary. You, once you polish this, and of course this is pretty soft material anyway, but once you polish this, you'll you'll have all that done. But uh, then once you're finished, you've got your bevel on there like you need, your back's polished, uh, and, you're, and you're ready to go. It's, it's that simple, but, but that's, the, that's the main thing about uh, when, you're, when you're working with hearts uh, where people have problems. But like I say, a lot of times it's your equipment. You can't... Uh, you can't get around it unless you have the right equipment to do it. Uh, and uh, and yeah, Carol, Carol don't want no no real wide girdles on her. So so uh, be aware. Most people, I'm I'm going to say they like uh, three millimeter. You know. Uh, I'm going to say in most cases, three millimeters is probably standard. Uh, it's the problem when you start putting too uh, thick of a uh, girdle on it is it limits design. If somebody wants to use a, a uh, low bezel wire because of design, they want it, they want it to be that way. They can't. It, it limits their design and they can't do the same design with the stone so that's what you have to be aware of now I used to cut all my stones and I didn't I didn't put a girdle at all on them I just uh, I put full full dome and, and a tapered back and, and we went that way and you have to you have to be aware it's it's and especially if, if you're getting one cut a custom stone if you want someone to cut one you have a lot of say in that, but otherwise you you're kind of left to whoever you deal with, and that's why certain certain uh, people deal with uh, certain certain of your jewelry designers deal with certain lapidaries because they're used to their stones the way they do and all that kind of stuff. So so uh, be aware of that. I'm guessing that's going to round it up in. Uh, Hopefully you have a better idea now on that. Hopefully the ones that are thinking about cabbing uh, have a little better idea on the the equipment that that's out there, uh, so so that they can get a, a, a better grasp on what they might want when they when they start dealing with it, uh, because. Like I say, there's so many different factors that that affects uh, the outcome as far as and what you use. Like I say, I, I use a, a genie totally different than most people do. I I've always been a person to modify my equipment, so so it it uh, make it makes a, a difference if you have that cap capability. If you if you have that capability to work on your equipment and turn it into what you want. I mean, that's what they they did back in the 50s, 60s and, and all that. They they built most of their equipment and they turned it around and, and made it into uh, something that they could use. But the main thing is what you have plans to do because uh, if if you're planning on making a heart and you're planning on using some of the, the regular cabbing equipment, then and you might want to get special wheels. They do have uh, some carving wheels and stuff like that. But 
this route that I that I go, I you know, you purchase the expandable drum once, and then your your belts are a lot cheaper than than buying wheels. They now they're not going to last as long as wheels, but they last a long time. And, and it, I'm I'm really some might say thrifty. I just say I'm a cheapskate. So so I'm going to find the cheapest way to do it, and I stick with it. If I find something that works better, then I'll go with that. Uh, other than that, let's make sure one last time. Don't look like we have any more questions, so I'm going to say adios, and until next time.